thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. And I know you had a very busy time. There was some announcement. Before we get to the announcement, maybe you can tell the audience what IAC is. Sure. IAC is a collection of consumer internet companies. Uh, we've, in our history, owned a, a wide range of internet companies. Currently, we have a, a big collection of dating businesses, Home Advisor, Vimeo, some publishing businesses. Most all, all consumer facing and mostly um, uh, internet, either ad supported or subscription supported. But in our history, we've owned a wide range of internet businesses. And, and what we do as a company is build, nurture, grow, assemble these businesses. And then frequently, when we have one that's doing very well and, and a leader in its category like matches and can really stand on its own two feet, we either take it public or, or spin it off to our shareholders. So in the last 10 years, IAC now has eight public companies that have uh, uh, come out of what was one company 10 years ago. And, and the smallest of those would be about a billion of market, billion and a half of market cap. Biggest is close to 20 billion and combined, it's probably 40 or 50 billion of market cap that's come out of IAC in the last 10 years. And what's the market cap of IAC? Uh, around six billion, I think, give or take. So you're one of the largest incubators as such. You could think about it that way, yeah. I, I, you know, we, we, we incubate kind of everywhere on the spectrum. So Tinder was something we built from scratch from within IAC. Um, we, we had a team that had equity in an entity that, that built it with IAC's capital directly within IAC. And, and then Match.com is something we bought 16 years ago that we bought you know, entirely and, and have added on a, a handful of businesses we've bought in that category since then. So what I find fascinating, if you look at IAC and look what you created and the companies which came out of you, and I think it's like Expedia, TripAdvisor, I think Ticketmaster, I mean, these are all global leaders. And what we ask ourselves when we look at that track record, I mean, how do you do this? There must be some magic to it. I think there's a bit of brand building. You always build big brands, but what, what lessons can you share with, with our uh, audience, how you manage to create the successes? It, it, it certainly is, brand is something that's very important to us, for sure. But it all starts with product and, and brand comes out of product. You, know, you, you have to fundamentally have a, a successful product that delivers on a consumer need and we're, we'll focus those in areas where we think there's a very large market. Dating was an enormous market and only getting bigger as, as more people get comfortable dating online as opposed to, or beginning dates online as opposed to offline. Um, Home Advisor is similar. It's a, a in, just in the U.S., it's probably a 200 to 400 billion dollar market, and the, the there's enormous room for efficiency in matching consumers with home service professionals. And it, it again, that starts with product. Once you have a product that can put those things together, that can put those marketplaces together, then you can start to build a brand on top of that. And we're we're very big believers in building brands through marketing and 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 whatever means you can. So large market, product, and then you wrap a brand around it on top of it. How important is management? <laughs> usually important, usually important. And usually the people who built the businesses to this large scale, are they the ones also then, I think you, 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 you spin them, right? You do spin-offs of them and then you distribute them to the ISC shareholders. Are these usually the same management teams? Is that continuity? Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. When we're buying a business in a new category, we're betting on a management team. You know, when we entered, every category we've entered, when, when it's from scratch, we're betting on a, a new management team. Many times when we're, we're expanding within a category, we're also betting on a management team, although it is possible when, when we already have a business in a category that we don't need to get uh, that, that we don't need to rely on a new management team because we have capable management who understands the category already. But for us, management is hugely important in, in almost all cases of, of where we're acquiring a company. And we, we compensate people exceptionally well, whether they're the original entrepreneurs or whether they're what I'll call sort of follow-on entrepreneurs, where they come in and, and bring a, a company from stage one to stage infinity. So you have how long been with Interactive Corp? Twelve years. So you met Mr. Barry Diller many, many times, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Is he still actively involved in the business? He, yeah, he's very actively involved. Um, he doesn't 
not so much in day-to-day -day operating the businesses, but very involved in M&A, very involved in strategy, and he's, he's engaged daily, yeah. And if you look at your verticals, I think you originally came out of the search business. You, you ran that for quite some time. Yep. Um, we have done a lot of deals in search for Softonic and worked on Conduit and other stuff. And I recently read that you renewed your Google search contract. And knowing that Google is a difficult company to deal with, they're, they're quite disciplined in what they do. I mean, knowing also that some of the other players in the industries did not renew the, the Google contract, what, what, how, how do you deal with the Google relationship or why, why do you think you, you manage to partner with them consistently? Look, we, we've had a very healthy relationship with Google and, and we certainly challenge each other frequently, but we've had a healthy relationship with Google for really since the beginning, for 12 years now. We've generated, for us, through our Google agreement, probably around $10 billion in revenue, and, and that means it's more than that for Google. So even for a company of Google's scale, I think our, our revenue matters. It's meaningful. Matters. So it, when you're it, meaningful, they, it, they need it matters. It's, it's certainly helpful. Look, both sides have to need something in the agreement, and uh, there, there are things that matter more to one side and, and less to the other side, and that's how you figure out how to to get an arrangement, but we're, we're, we're very pleased with the arrangement we have with them, and it's been a, like I said, it's been a very successful partnership for a long time, and now we have four more years. So you're about to spin Match, which is how much in revenues, roughly, for this year? A oh. billion, give or take. A billion revenues. A billion revenues for online dating. Uh, your search business, I think, is a little bit bigger, and then you have your search business, your home advisor, what, what are the new verticals you are excited about? Well, th that's a very good question. It's something we're spending a lot of time thinking about. I think within our existing verticals, we're hugely excited, and I think we see a lot of opportunity to deploy more capital. And I think that's generally where we've been the best at deploying capital because we know how the business works, how the category works. We have a, a management team and data and analytics that we can rely on. Um, but we absolutely need to make some new bets in some new categories, and we're going to. What, what those are, th there's a lot of areas that, are, that interest us right now. Healthcare, there's still, especially in the U.S., there's so much changing so quickly in healthcare. I think that we're, we're spending time thinking about that. Um, food, there's a tremendous amount changing. Just thinking about how to get uh, dinner to the dinner table, whether that's through a restaurant. Are you in or food delivery. already? Nowhere. Uh, nowhere. Um, and yet. these are just, just things where we see a lot of innovation, a lot of capital, and, and theoretically maybe opportunity at some point. But, but we're opportunistic in our, our M&A. We look for things that excite us, and then we make a move. And talk, talking about m and I don't know if you were here this morning, but we actually invested today almost a million dollars in Pipedrive, which is a CRM software company. It's my favorite CRM software company. But I think you have also done it quite significant deal and we chatted about it last night a little bit. Can you share what you M&A wise announced? Yes, so yesterday afternoon we announced a um, offer for Angie's List, which is a, a company in the US that similar to Home Advisor connects consumers with home service professionals and we offered to buy the company for around $500 million, give or take. So, so Home Advisor will be a big vertical and we hope so, yeah. And it is already a big vertical. Yeah. It, I, I, look, it, it's, I think we'll do something like $360 million of revenues in that it, business this year, and that's growing 30%, 40% year-on-year right now. So that's, that's pretty exciting and, and, and profitable. And w what we're seeing as we grow this business is the network effect really starting to take hold. So we have a, a hunt, now 100,000 service professionals in the U.S. on the, call it the supply side, and building up really nice demand on the consumer side and, and that marketplace when you have more consumers and better consumers and more service professionals and better service professionals, everyone is happier as you connect them. Yes, marketplaces for services seem to be a big thing, especially when you think about all these European startups which receive quite nice rounds and also in the US. And we have the marketplaces tomorrow on stage. Um, on on the, the home advisor side, is there like a, you said, it's a, how big market? I mean, these numbers are quite We crazy. think just in the U.S. is 200 to 400 billion. So 200 to 
400 billion like home improvement work. That's right. And what is your business model on that? We charge service professionals a subscription to be on our platform. Which so it's a listing fee, basically? Well, that, that subscription really allows them to, to access the platform. And, and one of the big things that the subscription does is it, it encourages them to engage with the platform. And then they, they pay a lead fee when they're connected with a consumer. Um, but, but from a service professional perspective, you, 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 want, you want to have a subscription product because you want them to... to commit to a platform, because the first lead won't always necessarily close, but the, if you take enough leads, without question, you're, it's going to be a very profitable channel for you as a service professional. It needs to be meaningful for them. Yes. They need to spend some time. That's right. So let's talk about Europe. As you know, we are bankers normally. <laughs> um, what are the things European companies should keep in mind when they pitch IAC as a buyer for their businesses? What are you looking for? First of all, in terms of segments, and second, in terms of what company-specific KPIs or features you're looking for. Yeah, so, so the marketplace theme, which, which you'll have tomorrow, is a great one for us and a very important one for us. We, we, the businesses where we have done the best and where we think we have the, the biggest competitive advantage or mode around the business is when we, we can build a marketplace. So, so Home Advisor, we talked about Vimeo is another uh, gr great marketplace within IAC. This is a marketplace of video sellers and a marketplace of video buyers. And that, that we're starting to see great traction in there. We have a, a now a million buyers of video uh, in the last year on the, the Vimeo platform. So when we think a business has is marketplace... Is Vimeo like a YouTube or how do we need yeah, to think of it? Yeah, except without ads. So it's out ads. Yeah. So uh, how is the how are the revenues generated? There's there's two big streams. Number one is subscriptions for video uploaders. So a lot of um, professionals or semi-professionals or even moms and dads will upload and store their video on Vimeo and share it with their friends because they don't want ads. They want a supportive community. They want a, a cleaner, sort of prettier uh, uh, platform to show their videos. And so, number one. And number two, that the second revenue stream is we give them the ability to sell their video so they can press a button and be selling it in 220-something countries overnight. Is our CTO somewhere here? We have to move from YouTube to Vimeo. That makes a lot of sense. Th that's right. If, and I, I assume this chat in particular would be a very high seller. We could make a lot of money right now. Let's do it. <laughs> do I need to share? How much do I need to share the revenues? You keep 90%. I keep 90%? Yes. And who are the buyers? Consumers. I mean, we have, um, again, a million buyers r right now on the platform, and we're seeing a lot of repeat buy among those consumers. But uh, sometimes it's instructional videos of people who are, you know, are very focused on a category. Sometimes it's, it's drama. You know, we have a series called, uh, we, we had a series called High Maintenance, which is now on HBO. Um, those, it's really the, the, the whole range of consumers on, on video. But it's all user-generated content. That, that's right, yes. So it is, it is truly a marketplace in the sense of anyone can choose to be on Vimeo overnight, which is very different than a Netflix or very different than an Apple where you have to go through a, an editor or a distribution process to, to get live. We could be live if your CTO is here. You could be live before we're done with the well, He's the coming chat. at the end of the speech for sure. Marco, <laughs> come down here. Marco Bombach is our, our CTO. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about valuations. Um, you, you, you guys know when to buy and when to sell. And looking at, I guess, the 50 billion of valuation uh, Barry and his team has created over time, do you see a valuation arbitrage between Europe and the US? Is the US market more kind of punchy valued than the European? I don't, I don't think so, although maybe there's a distinction between public and private. I think first, even within the US, I, the, the private market, I think, is significantly overvalued relative to the public market. And Why think, is that? Uh, because they don't get judged on a daily basis or a quarterly basis. It, they could be judged sometimes only every year or sometimes only every couple of years. So you, you don't have to adjust as, as, as valuations as quickly. Uh, but eventually, when, when, when you look at where exits could be and where, where public market multiples are, that has to find its way to the private market uh, valuations. Uh, so, so, so there's a big dis disconnect, I think, between public and private. I think between US and Europe, I don't, I don't see that as much. I mean, you can look at examples like Grubhub and Seamless in the US, which is the food delivery uh, company, and, and there's 
several in Europe that have similar metrics but that are significantly higher valued. So I don't know how to, to oh, reconcile okay. those differences. But they're maybe growing faster, right? Some are, some aren't. Yeah. So let's go back to the survival guide for I want to sell my company to ISC. Um, is there like a minimum size in terms of a deal you look at for an, a new vertical or even yeah. an existing one? For, uh, for an existing vertical, no, we'd probably look at something of any size if we think it can help the business and we can, we can add to it if we think it has potential. On new verticals, we'd likely look at something that has real revenue or, or a, a clear path to profits. Uh, and, and generally in a new vertical, we'd, we'd probably look to write a bigger check to get into something. But I think, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but you haven't bought big businesses in Europe yet, right? We bought Metic for Metic. Our, our dating company. You, you were all briefly involved in that yeah. a long time ago in a prior life. You guys couldn't afford us at Lehman That's Brothers, right. I remember. That's right. <laughs> I, I think you didn't need us, right? We, we, we were pretty think. far along. We, yeah. we were pretty far along. And so looking at the European ecosystem, um, I mean, is there like a certain country which excites you the most? I mean, there are a lot of Americans picking great technology companies up in Israel. Are you, are you guys spending time in Israel? Is it a market you, where you're active? You, we've, we've bought, we bought one company in Israel a few years ago, and we certainly love the, I mean, it is amazing the innovation that's coming out of a country that small. When you have a, a country that small, businesses that start there are built from their from the get-go for, for an international market, which is a huge asset, I think, for Israel. When, when people build a company in the U.S., they focus first on the U.S. market, and I think the same is true to some extent for Europe or European countries. They but have to build such a great product that it works in every that's, country, right? That's right, because you can't just build it for the Israeli market. So, um, Looking at contacting IAC, I mean, how do people reach, maybe not you, but what is the best way to, you know, get in contact with IAC? I think you have a, a Adam Rostin, our head of M&A. He's, he's right there. Can we pull up a picture of Can we have a Adam? picture of Adam up so Just people can spend some, spend some time with Adam? Adam's here, and I, I see him sitting in the crowd, and I think he brought his checkbook. So if anybody's <laughs> interested, you should talk to Adam quickly. Joey, thank you so much for this. Really Thanks, appreciate Marco. it. Good luck and good to see you. Come, come to uh, Berlin, where we have to show you how it works in the German side. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you.